Topography of the Amazon River Basin The Amazon River in South America is the largest river by discharge volume of water in the world. And the disputed longest river in the world. The headwaters of the Apurimac River on Nevado Misti had been considered for nearly a century as the Amazon's most distant source, until a 2014 study found it to be the headwaters of the Montero River on the Cordillera Rumi Cruz in Peru. The Montero and Apurimac Rivers join, and with other tributaries form the Ucayali River, which in turn meets the Marañón River upstream of Iquitos, Peru, forming what countries other than Brazil consider to be the main stem of the Amazon. Brazilians call this section the Solomois River above its confluence with the Rio Negro forming what Brazilians call the Amazon at the meeting of waters at Manaus, the largest city on the river. At an average discharge of about 209,000 cubic meters per second, approximately 6,591 cubic kilometers per annum greater than the next seven largest independent rivers combined, the Amazon represents 20% of the global riverine discharge to the ocean. The Amazon Basin is the largest drainage basin in the world, with an area of approximately 7 million square kilometers. The portion of the river's drainage basin in Brazil alone is larger than any other river's basin. The Amazon enters Brazil with only one-fifth of the flow it finally discharges into the Atlantic Ocean yet already has a greater flow at this point than the discharge of any other river. The Amazon was initially known by Europeans as the Marañón, and the Peruvian part of the river is still known by that name today. It later became known as Rio Amazonas in Spanish and Portuguese. The name Rio Amazonas was reportedly given after native warriors attacked a 16th century expedition by Francisco de Oriana. The warriors were led by women, reminding de Oriana of the Amazon warriors, a tribe of women warriors related to Iranian Scythians and Sarmatians mentioned in Greek mythology. The word Amazon itself may be derived from the Iranian compound Hamas and fighting together or ethnonym Hamazan warriors, a word attested indirectly. Through a derivation, a denominal verb in Hesychius of Alexandria's gloss mu alpha zeta alpha kappa rho alpha nu middle dot pi omicron lambda epsilon mu epsilon nu pi rho sigma alpha iota where it appears together with the Indo-Iranian root karmic. Other scholars insist that the name is derived from the Native American word Amasana, meaning boat destroyer. Recent geological studies suggest that for millions of years the Amazon River used to flow in the opposite direction, from east to west. Eventually the Andes Mountains formed, blocking its flow to the Pacific Ocean, and causing it to switch directions to its current mouth in the Atlantic Ocean. Old Drawing of Arapaima Fishing at the Amazon River during what many archaeologists call the formative stage, Amazonian societies were deeply involved in the emergence of South America's highland agrarian systems. The trade with Andean civilizations in the terrains of the headwaters and the Andes formed an essential contribution to the social and religious development of higher altitude civilizations like the Muisca and Incas. Early human settlements were typically based on low lying hills or mounds. Shell mounds were the earliest evidence of habitation. They represent piles of human refuse and are mainly dated between 7,500 and 4,000 years BC. They are associated with ceramic age cultures. No pre-ceramic shell mounds have been documented so far by archaeologists. Artificial earth platforms for entire villages are the second type of mounds. They are best represented by the Mariora culture. Figurative mounds are the most recent types of occupation. There is ample evidence that the areas surrounding the Amazon River were home to complex and large-scale indigenous societies, mainly chieftains who developed towns and cities. Archaeologists estimate that by the time the Spanish conquistador de Oriana traveled across the Amazon in 1541, more than 3 million indigenous people lived around the Amazon. These pre-Columbian settlements created highly developed civilizations. For instance, Pre-Columbian indigenous people on the island of Marajo may have developed social stratification and supported a population of 100,000 people. To achieve this level of development, the indigenous inhabitants of the Amazon rainforest altered the forest's ecology by selective cultivation and the use of fire. Scientists argue that by burning areas of the forest repeatedly, the indigenous people caused the soil to become richer in nutrients. This created dark soil areas known as Terra Preta de Indio. Because of the Terra Preta, indigenous communities were able to make land fertile and thus sustainable for the large-scale agriculture needed to support their large populations and complex social structures. Further research has hypothesized that this practice began around 11,000 years ago. 
Some say that its effects on forest ecology and regional climate explain the otherwise inexplicable band of lower rainfall through the Amazon basin. Many indigenous tribes engaged in constant warfare. According to James S. Olson, the Manduraku expansion dislocated and displaced the Kawahib, breaking the tribe down into much smaller groups. Manduraku first came to the attention of Europeans in 1770 when they began a series of widespread attacks on Brazilian settlements along the Amazon River. Amazon tributaries near Manaus in March 1500, Spanish conquistador Vicente Yanez Pinzon was the first documented European to sail up the Amazon River. Pinzon called the stream Rio Santa Maria del Mar Dulce, later shortened to Mar Dulce, literally, Sweet Sea, because of its freshwater pushing out into the ocean. Another Spanish explorer, Francisco de Oriana, was the first European to travel from the origins of the upstream river basins, situated in the Andes, to the mouth of the river. In this journey, Oriana baptized some of the affluents of the Amazonas like Rio Negro, Napo, and Jirwa. The name Amazonas is thought to be taken from the native warriors that attacked this expedition, mostly women, that reminded de Oriana of the mythical female Amazon warriors from the ancient Hellenic culture in Greece. Samuel Fritz's 1707 map showing the Amazon and the Orinoco Gonzalo Pizarro set off in 1541 to explore east of Quito into the South American interior in search of El Dorado, the city of gold and La Canela, the Valley of Cinnamon. He was accompanied by his second-in-command Francisco de Oriana. After 170 kilometers, the Coca River joined the Napo River, the party stopped for a few weeks to build a boat just upriver from this confluence. They continued downriver through an uninhabited area where they could not find food. Oriana offered and was ordered to follow the Napo River, then known as Rio de la Canela and return with food for the party. Based on intelligence received from a captive native chief named Delicola, they expected to find food within a few days downriver by ascending another river to the north. De Oriana took about 57 men, the boat, and some canoes and left Pizarro's troops on December 26, 1541. However, de Oriana missed the confluence where he was searching supplies for his men. By the time he and his men reached another village, many of them were sick from hunger and eating noxious plants, and near death. Seven men died in that village. His men threatened to mutiny if the expedition turned back to attempt to rejoin Pizarro, the party being over 100 leagues downstream at this point. He accepted to change the purpose of the expedition to discover new lands in the name of the King of Spain, and the men built a larger boat in which to navigate downstream. After a journey of 600 kilometers down the Napo River, they reached a further major confluence, at a point near modern Iquitos, and then followed the upper Amazon. Now known as the Solomois, for a further 1,200 kilometers to its confluence with the Rio Negro, which they reached on June 3, 1542. Regarding the initial mission of finding cinnamon, Pizarro reported to the king that they had found cinnamon trees, but that they could not be profitably harvested. True cinnamon is not native to South America. Other related cinnamon-containing plants are fairly common in that part of the Amazon and Pizarro probably saw some of these. The expedition reached the mouth of the Amazon on August 24, 1542, demonstrating the practical navigability of the Great River. Mask dance, and wedding feast of Tacuna Indians, engravings for Bates's 1863 The Naturalist on the River Amazons in 1560, another Spanish conquistador, Lope de Aguirre, may have made the second descent of the Amazon. Historians are uncertain whether the river he descended was the Amazon or the Orinoco River, which runs more or less parallel to the Amazon further north. Portuguese explorer Pedro Teixeira was the first European to travel up the entire river. He arrived in Quito in 1637, and returned via the same route. From 1648 to 1652, Portuguese-Brazilian bandeiran Antonio Raposo Tavares led an expedition from São Paulo overland to the mouth of the Amazon. Investigating many of its tributaries, including the Rio Negro, and covering a distance of over 10,000 kilometers. In what is currently in Brazil, Ecuador, Bolivia, Colombia, Peru, and Venezuela, Several colonial and religious settlements were established along the banks of primary rivers and tributaries for trade. Slaving and evangelization among the indigenous peoples of the vast rainforest, such as the Urina. In the late 1600s, Czech Jesuit Father Samuel Fritz, an apostle of the Omegas established some 40 mission villages. Fritz proposed that the Marignon River must be the source of the Amazon, noting on his 1707 map that the Marignon has its source on the southern shore of a lake that is called Larikasha. Near Wanuko. 
Fritz reasoned that the Mar Yon is the largest river branch one encounters when journeying upstream, and lies farther to the west than any other tributary of the Amazon. For most of the 18th-19th centuries and into the 20th century, the Mar Yon was generally considered the source of the Amazon. Henry Walter Bates was most famous for his expedition to the Amazon. Early scientific, zoological and botanical exploration of the Amazon River and Basin took place from the 18th century through the first half of the 19th century. Amazonas State Amazon Theater Opera House in Manaus built in 1896 during the rubber boom Metropolitan Cathedral of Sonoraim, in Sonoraim, Brazil Iglesia Matriz in Iquitos, Peru The Cabanagem Revolt was directed against the white ruling class. It is estimated that from 30 to 40 percent of the population of Grau Pará, estimated at 100,000 people, died. The population of the Brazilian portion of the Amazon basin in 1850 was perhaps 300,000, of whom about two-thirds were Europeans and slaves, the slaves amounting to about 25,000. The Brazilian Amazon's principal commercial city, Pará, had from 10,000 to 12,000 inhabitants, including slaves. The town of Manaus, now Manaus, at the mouth of the Rio Negro, had a population between 1,000 and 1,500. All the remaining villages, as far up as Tabachinga, on the Brazilian frontier of Peru, were relatively small. On September 6, 1850, Emperor Pedro II of Brazil sanctioned a law authorizing steam navigation on the Amazon and gave the Viscount of Moa the task of putting it into effect. He organized the Compania de Navegação e Comércio do Amazonas in Rio de Janeiro in 1852. In the following year it commenced operations with four small steamers, the Monarca, the Comata, the Marajo and the Rio Negro. At first, navigation was principally confined to the main river, and even in 1857 a modification of the government contract only obliged the company to a monthly service between Pará and Manaus. With steamers of 200 tons cargo capacity, a second line to make six round voyages a year between Manaus and Tabachinga, and a third, two trips a month between Pará and Kamata. This was the first step in opening up the vast interior. The success of the venture called attention to the opportunities for economic exploitation of the Amazon, and a second company soon opened commerce on the Madeira. Puris, and Negro, a third established a line between Pará and Manaus, and a fourth found it profitable to navigate some of the smaller streams. In that same period, the Amazonas company was increasing its fleet. Meanwhile, private individuals were building and running small steam craft of their own on the main river as well as on many of its tributaries. On July 31, 1867, the government of Brazil, constantly pressed by the maritime powers and by the countries encircling the upper Amazon basin, especially Peru, decreed the opening of the Amazon to all countries. But they limited this to certain defined points, Tabachinga, on the Amazon, Camata, on the Deocanchines, Santarim, on the Tapajós, Borba, on the Madeira, and Manaus, on the Rio Negro. The Brazilian decree took effect on September 7, 1867. Thanks in part to the mercantile development associated with steamboat navigation coupled with the internationally driven demand for natural rubber, the Peruvian city of Iquitos became a thriving, cosmopolitan center of commerce. Foreign companies settled in Iquitos, from whence they controlled the extraction of rubber. In 1851 Iquitos had a population of 200, and by 1900 its population reached 20,000. In the 1860s, approximately 3,000 tons of rubber were being exported annually, and by 1911 annual exports had grown to 44,000 tons, representing 9.3% of Peru's exports. During the rubber boom it is estimated that diseases brought by immigrants, such as typhus and malaria, killed 40,000 native Amazonians. The first direct foreign trade with Manaus commenced around 1874. Local trade along the river was carried on by the English successors to the Amazonas Company, the Amazon Steam Navigation Company, as well as numerous small steamboats, belonging to companies and firms engaged in the rubber trade. Navigating the Negro, Madeira, Puris and many other tributaries, such as the Mar Yon, to ports as distant as Nada, Peru. By the turn of the 20th century, the exports of the Amazon basin were India rubber, cacao beans, Brazil nuts and a few other products of minor importance. Such as pelts and exotic forest produce and extracted goods, such as lumber and gold. Manaus, the largest city in Amazonas, as seen from a NASA satellite image, surrounded by the dark Rio Negro and the muddy Amazon River city of Manaus floating houses in Leticia, Colombia since colonial times. 
The Portuguese portion of the Amazon basin has remained a land largely undeveloped by agriculture and occupied by indigenous people who survived the arrival of European diseases. Four centuries after the European discovery of the Amazon River, the total cultivated area in its basin was probably less than 65 square kilometers. Excluding the limited and crudely cultivated areas among the mountains at its extreme headwaters. This situation changed dramatically during the 20th century. Weary of foreign exploitation of the nation's resources, Brazilian governments in the 1940s set out to develop the interior, away from the seaboard where foreigners owned large tracts of land. The original architect of this expansion was President Getúlio Vargas, with the demand for rubber from the Allied forces in World War II providing funding for the drive. In the 1960s, economic exploitation of the Amazon basin was seen as a way to fuel the economic miracle occurring at the time. This resulted in the development of Operation Amazon, an economic development project that brought large-scale agriculture and ranching to Amazonia. This was done through a combination of credit and fiscal incentives. However, in the 1970s the government took a new approach with the National Integration Program. A large-scale colonization program saw families from northeastern Brazil relocated to the land without people in the Amazon basin. This was done in conjunction with infrastructure projects mainly the Trans-Amazonian Highway. The Trans-Amazonian Highway's three pioneering highways were completed within 10 years but never fulfilled their promise. Large portions of the Trans-Amazonian and its accessory roads, such as BR-319, are derelict and impassable in the rainy season. Small towns and villages are scattered across the forest, and because its vegetation is so dense, some remote areas are still unexplored. Many settlements grew along the road from Brasilia to Belém with the Highway and National Integration Program, however, the program failed as the settlers were unequipped to live in the delicate rainforest ecosystem. This, although the government believed it could sustain millions, instead could sustain very few. With a population of 1.9 million people in 2014, Manaus is the largest city on the Amazon. Manaus alone makes up approximately 50% of the population of the largest Brazilian state of Amazonas. The racial makeup of the city is 64% pardo and 32% white. Although the Amazon River remains undammed, around 412 dams are in operation in the Amazon's tributary rivers. From these 412 dams, 151 are constructed over six of the main tributary rivers that drain into the Amazon. Since only 4% of the Amazon's hydropower potential has been developed in countries like Brazil, more damming projects are underway and hundreds more are planned. After witnessing the negative effects of environmental degradation, sedimentation, navigation and flood control caused by the Three Gorges Dam in the Yangtze River, scientists are worried that constructing more dams in the Amazon will harm its biodiversity in the same way by blocking fish spawning runs, reducing the flows of vital oil nutrients and clearing forests. Damming the Amazon River could potentially bring about the end of free-flowing rivers and contribute to an ecosystem collapse that will cause major social and environmental problems. The Amazon was thought to originate from the Apache to Cliff in Arequipa at the Nevado Mismi, marked only by a wooden cross. Nevado Mismi, formerly considered to be the source of the Amazon Marañón River in Peru the most distant source of the Amazon was thought to be in the Apurimac River drainage for nearly a century. Such studies continued to be published even recently, such as in 1996, 2001, 2007, and 2008, where various authors identified the snow-capped 5,597 meters Nevado Mismi Peak. Located roughly 160 kilometers west of Lake Titicaca and 700 kilometers southeast of Lima, as the most distant source of the river. From that point, Quebrada Carwasanta emerges from Nevado Mismi, joins Quebrada Apachita and soon forms Rio Laqueta which becomes Rio Orneos and eventually joins the Rio Apurimac. A 2014 study by Americans James Contos and Nicholas Triptovich in area, a peer-reviewed journal of the Royal Geographical Society, however, identifies the most distant source of the Amazon as actually being in the Rio Madro drainage. A variety of methods were used to compare the lengths of the Montero River versus the Apurimac River from their most distant source points to their confluence, showing the longer length of the Montero. Then distances from Lago Hunin to several potential source points in the uppermost Montero River were measured, which enabled them to determine that the Cordillera Rumi Cruz was the most distant source of water in the Montero Basin. The most accurate measurement method was direct GPS measurement obtained by kayak descent of each of the rivers from their source points to their confluence. 
Obtaining these measurements was difficult given the class 4, v nature of each of these rivers, especially in their lower abyss sections. Ultimately, they determined that the most distant point in the Montero drainage is nearly 80 kilometers farther upstream compared to Mount Mismi in the Apurimac drainage, and thus the maximal length of the Amazon River is about 80 kilometers longer than previously thought. Cantos continued downstream to the ocean and finished the first complete descent of the Amazon River from its newly identified source, a journey repeated by two groups after the news spread. After about 700 kilometers, the Apurimac then joins Rio Montero to form the Ine, which joins the Perin to form the Tambo, which joins the Urubamba River to form the Ucayali. After the confluence of Apurimac and Ucayali, the river leaves Andean terrain and is surrounded by floodplain. From this point to the confluence of the Ucayali and the Marañón, some 1,600 kilometers, the forested banks are just above the water and are inundated long before the river attains its maximum flood stage. The low river banks are interrupted by only a few hills, and the river enters the enormous Amazon rainforest. Amazon River near Iquitos, Peru Although the ucayali marañón confluence is the point at which most geographers place the beginning of the Amazon River proper, in Brazil the river is known at this point as the Solomoistas Aguas. The river systems and floodplains in Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela, whose waters drain into the Solomois and its tributaries, are called the Upper Amazon. The Amazon proper runs mostly through Brazil and Peru, and is part of the border between Colombia and Peru. It has a series of major tributaries in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, some of which flow into the Marañón and Ucayali, and others directly into the Amazon proper. These include rivers Putumayo, Cacata, Vops, Guinea, Morona, Pastaza, Nucure, Uratuiku, Chambira, Tigra, Nanai, Napo, and Hualaga. At some points, the river divides into anabranches, or multiple channels, often very long, with inland and lateral channels, all connected by a complicated system of natural canals. Cutting the low, flat Igapo lands, which are never more than 5 meters above low river, into many islands. From the town of Canaria at the great bend of the Amazon to the Negro, vast areas of land are submerged at high water, above which only the upper part of the trees of the somber forests appear. Near the mouth of the Rio Negro de Serpa, nearly opposite the river Madeira, the banks of the Amazon are low, until approaching Manaus, they rise to become rolling hills. Meeting of waters, the confluence of Rio Negro and Rio Solomois near Manaus, Brazil water samples of the Solomois and Rio. Negro the lower Amazon begins where the darkly colored waters of the Rio Negro meet the sandy colored Rio Solomois. And for over 6 kilometers these waters run side by side without mixing. Abidouche, a bluff 17 meters above the river is backed by low hills. The lower Amazon seems to have once been a gulf of the Atlantic Ocean, the waters of which wash the cliffs near Abidouche. Only about 10% of the Amazon's water enters downstream of Abidouche, very little of which is from the northern slope of the valley. The drainage area of the Amazon basin above Abidouche city is about 5 million square kilometers, and, the low, only about 1,000. 000 square kilometers, exclusive of the 1,400,000 square kilometers of the Dokonchins Basin. The Dokonchins River enters the southern portion of the Amazon Delta. In the lower reaches of the river, the north bank consists of a series of steep, table-topped hills extending for about 240 kilometers from opposite the mouth of the Shingu as far as Monte Alegre. These hills are cut down to a kind of terrace which lies between them and the river. On the south bank, Above the Shingu, a line of low bluffs bordering the floodplain extends nearly to Santarim in a series of gentle curves before they bend to the southwest. And, abutting upon the lower Tapajós, merge into the bluffs which form the terrace margin of the Tapajós River Valley. Satellite image of the mouth of the Amazon River, from the north looking south Belém is the major city and port at the mouth of the river at the Atlantic Ocean. The definition of where exactly the mouth of the Amazon is located, and how wide it is, is a matter of dispute, because of the area's peculiar geography. The Pará and the Amazon are connected by a series of river channels called Furos near the town of Breves, between them lies Marajó, the world's largest combined river-slash-sea island. If the Pará River and the Marajó Island ocean frontage are included, the Amazon estuary is some 325 kilometers wide. In this case, the width of the mouth of the river is usually measured from Cabo Norte, the cape located straight east of Pracuba in the Brazilian state of Amapá, 
Tapona de Tioca near the town of Carusa, in the state of Pará. A more conservative measurement excluding the Pará River estuary, from the mouth of the Araguari River to Pona do Navio on the northern coast of Marajó, would still give the mouth of the Amazon a width of over 180 kilometers. If only the river's main channel is considered, between the islands of Curua and Jurapari, the width falls to about 15 kilometers. The plume generated by the river's discharge covers up to 1. 3 million square kilometers and is responsible for muddy bottoms influencing a wide area of the tropical North Atlantic in terms of salinity, pH, light penetration, and sedimentation. There are no bridges across the entire width of the river. This is not because the river would be too wide to bridge, for most of its length, engineers could build a bridge across the river easily. For most of its course, the river flows through the Amazon rainforest, where there are very few roads and cities. Most of the time, the crossing can be done by a ferry. The Manaus-Iranduba bridge linking the cities of Manaus and Iranduba spans the Rio Negro, the second largest tributary of the Amazon, just before their confluence. River taxi in Peru While debate as to whether the Amazon or the Nile is the world's longest river has gone on for many years, the historic consensus of geographic authorities has been to regard the Amazon as the second longest river in the world. With the Nile being the longest. However, the Amazon has been reported as being anywhere between 6,275 and 6,992 kilometers long. It is often said to be at least 6,575 kilometers long. The Nile is reported to be anywhere from 5,499 to 7,088 kilometers. Often it is said to be about 6,650 kilometers long. There are several factors that can affect these measurements, such as the position of the geographical source in the mouth, the scale of measurement, and the length measuring techniques. In July 2008, the Brazilian Institute for Space Research published a news article on their webpage, claiming that the Amazon River was 140 kilometers longer than the Nile. The Amazon's length was calculated as 6,992 kilometers, taking the Apachita Creek as its source. Using the same techniques, the length of the Nile was calculated as 6,853 kilometers, which is longer than previous estimates but still shorter than the Amazon. The results were reached by measuring the Amazon downstream to the beginning of the tidal estuary of Canal du Sul and then, after a sharp turn back. Following tidal canals surrounding the Isle of Marajó and finally including the marine waters of the Rio Pará Bay in its entire length. According to an earlier article on the webpage of the National Geographic, the Amazon's length was calculated as 6,800 kilometers by a Brazilian scientist. In June 2007, Guido Gelli, director of science at the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, told London's Telegraph newspaper that it could be considered that the Amazon was the longest river in the world. However, according to the above sources, none of the two results was published, and questions were raised about the researcher's methodology. In 2009, a peer-reviewed article was published, concluding that the Nile is longer than the Amazon by stating a length of 7,088 kilometers for the Nile and 6. 575 kilometers for the Amazon, measured by using a combination of satellite image analysis and field investigations to the source regions. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the final length of the Amazon remains open to interpretation and continued debate. The Amazon Basin, the largest in the world, covers about 40% of South America, an area of approximately 7,050,000 square kilometers. It drains from west to east, from Iquitos in Peru, across Brazil to the Atlantic. It gathers its waters from 5 degrees north latitude to 20 degrees south latitude. Its most remote sources are found on the Interandian Plateau, just a short distance from the Pacific Ocean. The Amazon River and its tributaries are characterized by extensive forested areas that become flooded every rainy season. Every year, the river rises more than 9 meters, flooding the surrounding forests, known as Varzea. The Amazon's flooded forests are the most extensive example of this habitat type in the world. In an average dry season, 110,000 square kilometers of land are water covered, while in the wet season, the flooded area of the Amazon basin rises to 350,000 square kilometers. The quantity of water released by the Amazon to the Atlantic Ocean is enormous, up to 300,000 cubic meters per second in the rainy season, with an average of 209,000 cubic meters per second from 1973 to 1990. The Amazon is responsible for about 20% of the Earth's fresh water entering the ocean. The river pushes a vast plume of fresh water into the ocean. 
The plume is about 400 km long and between 100 and 200 km wide. The freshwater, being lighter, flows on top of the seawater, diluting the salinity and altering the color of the ocean surface over an area up to 2,500,000 square kilometers in extent. For centuries ships have reported fresh water near the Amazon's mouth yet well out of sight of land in what otherwise seemed to be the open ocean. The Atlantic has sufficient wave and tidal energy to carry most of the Amazon sediments out to sea, thus the Amazon does not form a true delta. The great deltas of the world are all in relatively protected bodies of water, while the Amazon empties directly into the turbulent Atlantic. There is a natural water union between the Amazon and in the Orinoco basins, the so-called Caciquier Canal. The Caciquier is a river distributary of the upper Orinoco, which flows southward into the Rio Negro, which in turn flows into the Amazon. The Caciquier is the largest river on Earth that links two major river systems, a so-called bifurcation. NASA satellite image of a flooded portion of the river not all of the Amazon's tributaries flood at the same time of the year. Many branches begin flooding in November and might continue to rise until June. The rise of the Rio Negro starts in February or March and begins to recede in June. The Madeira River rises and falls two months earlier than most of the rest of the Amazon River. The depth of the Amazon between Monacaparu and Abidouche has been calculated as between 20 to 26 meters. At Monacaparu, the Amazon's water level is only about 24 meters above mean sea level. More than half of the water in the Amazon downstream of Monacaparu is below sea level. In its lowermost section, the Amazon's depth averages 20 to 50 meters, in some places as much as 100 meters. The main river is navigable for large ocean steamers to Manaus, 1,500 kilometers upriver from the mouth. Smaller ocean vessels of 3,000 or 9,000 tons and 5. 5 meters draft can reach as far as Iquitos, Peru, 3,600 kilometers from the sea. Smaller river boats can reach 780 kilometers higher, as far as Aqual Point. Beyond that, small boats frequently ascend to the Pongo de Manseriche, just above Aqual Point in Peru. Annual flooding occurs in late northern latitude winter at high tide when the incoming waters of the Atlantic are funneled into the Amazon Delta. The resulting undular tidal bore is called the Pororoca, with a leading wave that can be up to 8 meters high and travel up to 800 kilometers inland. The Amazon River originated as a transcontinental river in the Miocene epoch between 11. 8 million and 11. 3 million years ago and took its present shape approximately 2. 4 million years ago in the early Pleistocene. The Proto-Amazon during the Cretaceous flowed west, as part of a Proto-Amazon-Congo river system, from the interior of present-day Africa when the continents were connected, forming western Gondwana. 80 million years ago, the two continents split. 15 million years ago, the main tectonic uplift phase of the Andean chain started. This tectonic movement is caused by the subduction of the Nazca plate underneath the South American plate. The rise of the Andes and the linkage of the Brazilian and Guyana bedrock shields, block the river and cause the Amazon basin to become a vast inland sea. Gradually, this inland sea became a massive swampy, freshwater lake and the marine inhabitants adapted to life in freshwater. 11 to 10 million years ago, waters worked through the sandstone from the west and the Amazon began to flow eastward, leading to the emergence of the Amazon rainforest. During glacial periods, sea levels dropped and the great Amazon lake rapidly drained and became a river, which would eventually become the world's second largest, draining the most extensive area of rainforest on the planet. Paralleling the Amazon River is a large aquifer, dubbed the Hamza River, the discovery of which was made public in August 2011. The Tambaqui, an important species in Amazonian fisheries, breeds in the Amazon River more than one-third of all known species in the world live in the Amazon rainforest. A giant tropical forest and river basin with an area that stretches more than 5,400,000 square kilometers. It is the richest tropical forest in the world in terms of biodiversity. There are over 3,000 species of fish currently recognized in the Amazon basin, with more being discovered every year. In addition to the thousands of species of fish, the river supports crabs, algae, and turtles. Mammals Amazon River Dolphin Along with the Orinoco, the Amazon is one of the main habitats of the Bodo, also known as the Amazon River Dolphin. It is the largest species of river dolphin, and it can grow to lengths of up to two. 6 meters. The color of its skin changes with age, young animals are gray, but become pink and then white as they mature. The dolphins use echolocation to navigate and hunt in the river's tricky depths. 
The Bodo is the subject of a legend in Brazil about a dolphin that turns into a man and seduces maidens by the riverside. The Tucuxi, also a dolphin species, is found both in the rivers of the Amazon basin and in the coastal waters of South America. The Amazonian manatee, also known as sea cow, is found in the northern Amazon River basin and its tributaries. It is a mammal and a herbivore. Its population is limited to freshwater habitats, and, unlike other manatees, it does not venture into salt water. It is classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The Amazon and its tributaries are the main habitat of the giant otter. Sometimes known as the river wolf, it is one of South America's top carnivores. Because of habitat destruction and hunting, its population has dramatically decreased. It is now listed on Appendix I of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, which effectively bans international trade. Reptiles green anaconda is the heaviest and one of the longest known extant snake species the anaconda is found in shallow waters in the Amazon basin. One of the world's largest species of snake, the anaconda spends most of its time in the water with just its nostrils above the surface. Species of caimans, that are related to alligators and other crocodilians, also inhabit the Amazon as do varieties of turtles. Birds fish caracans, such as the piranha species, are prey for the giant otter, but these aggressive fish may also pose a danger to humans. Neon tetra is one of the most popular aquarium fish. The Amazonian fish fauna is the center of diversity for neotropical fishes. 5,600 species are currently known, and approximately 50 new species are discovered each year. The arapaima, known in Brazil as the pararucu, is a South American tropical freshwater fish, one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, with a length of up to 15 feet. Another Amazonian freshwater fish is the arowana, such as the silver arowana, which is a predator and very similar to the arapaima, but only reaches a length of 120 centimeters. Also present in large numbers is the notorious piranha, an omnivorous fish that congregates in large schools and may attack livestock and even humans. There are approximately 30 to 60 species of piranha. However, only a few of its species are known to attack humans, most notably Pigocentris natureri, the red-bellied piranha. The Kandiru, native to the Amazon River, is a species of parasitic freshwater catfish in the family Trichomacteridae, just one of more than 1,200 species of catfish in the Amazon basin. Other catfish walk overland on their ventral fins, while the Kumakuma, aka Piraiba or Goliath catfish, can reach 3. 6 meters in length and 200 kilograms in weight. The electric eel and more than 100 species of electric fishes inhabit the Amazon basin. River stingrays are also known. The bull shark has been reported 4,000 kilometers up the Amazon River at Iquitos in Peru. Butterflies microbiota freshwater microbes are generally not very well known, even less so for a pristine ecosystem like the Amazon. Recently, metagenomics has provided answers to what kind of microbes inhabit the river. The most important microbes in the Amazon River are actinobacteria, alpha proteobacteria, beta proteobacteria, gamma proteobacteria, and crinarchiota. Solomois, the section of the upper Amazon River aerial view of an Amazon tributary The Amazon has over 1,100 tributaries, 12 of which are over 1,500 kilometers long. Some of the more notable ones are, 6,400 kilometers, Dash Amazon, South America 3,250 kilometers, Madeira, Bolivia slash Brazil 3,211 kilometers, Puris, Peru slash Brazil 2,820 kilometers, Japara or Kakata, Colombia slash Brazil 2,639. KM, Docanchins, Brazil 2,627 kilometers, Araguaia, Brazil 2,400 kilometers, Juruá, Peru slash Brazil 2,250 kilometers, Rio Negro, Brazil slash Venezuela slash Colombia 1,992 kilometers, Tapajós, Brazil 1,979 kilometers, Xingu. Brazil 1,900 km, Ucayali River, Peru 1,749 km, Guapor, Brazil slash Bolivia 1,575 km, Isa, Ecuador slash Colombia slash Peru 1,415 km, Marañón, Peru 1,370 km, Telus Pires, Brazil, Tributary. Of Tapajós 1,300 km, Eriri, Brazil 1,240 km, Juruna, Brazil 1,130 km, Madre de Dios, Peru slash Bolivia 1,100 km, 
Hualaga, Peru. Thanks for watching.